Welcome inside the Bob Devaney Sports Center. Another sellout crowd for volleyball in Lincoln, Nebraska. As the fans are introduced to the starters on the floor, let's introduce you to the starting lineups. We'll start with the Fighting Illini, and they are led by their senior outstanding setter in Jordan Poulter. And she does a lot of really great things with set position, but what I like best about her is that she's physical. She's not afraid to take the second ball over. She actually has a 360 hitting percentage. These lineups brought to you by American Ethanol, the starting lineup for the Illini. The look at the Nebraska starting lineup. We talked about the senior setter. Here is a freshman setter in Nicklin Hames. And she's really talented. She plays with a lot of moxie, but she's learning to get better at playing good in stretches, especially in those close sets. Number six versus number nine. They have met previously. In fact, early this year, Nebraska knocked off the Illini in Champaign. You see the disparity in hitting percentage, but this really, Beth, it was a matchup of serving. Nebraska really was able to take Illinois out of system all night in Champaign. Right, and these two teams are one and two in service aces per set in the Big Ten. So we're looking to see another really aggressive serving night, and I think a lot of out of system play. You mentioned it, Nebraska first in the Big Ten Conference in, in aces per set. Number two, the Illini. In fact, Nebraska with a total on the year of 136 aces. The Illini, 135. Right behind each other. Should be a good one tonight here in Lincoln. Once again, two top ten teams inside the Big Ten Conference. Nebraska will start it off in rotation one. Nicklin Hames back to serve for the Huskers. We mentioned she is a freshman out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Has been the starting setter since stepping on the court in Lincoln, Nebraska. The first ever freshman to start the year in a 5-1 as the setter for the Huskers. Right away, the tough serve as Beth predicted. And that's exactly how she wants to start this match. I can see from the angle we're sitting at, Larry, the ball is on a plane and then it drops off like it's rolling off a table. It's very difficult to pass. Nebraska with eight service aces the first time these two teams square off. You combine that with the eight service errors the Illini had, and it was a very tough night at home for the Fighting Illini. Bump set out to Jazz Sweet. Tries to push near corner. She goes right at Poulter, takes her out of system. Off the top of the block, but down in the swing by Jacqueline Quaid, who's been hot as of late. And she is carrying so much of a load for this team. She has 845 attempts. The next closest is Cooney with 552, so really seeing a lot of sets. Tough serve by the Illini. Jazz with the out of system swing, pulled back in. It'll be a free ball upcoming for the Huskers. Leaves it for Lexi Sun, hand on the block. But Sun gets credit with her first kill. I like to see Lexi Sun hitting on the right side. She's usually on the left, but when she's in that serve receive rotation, they'll put her on the right, and she has a really high shot from that angle. Here is Lexi Sun, a sophomore out of Encinitas, California. Transfer from Texas. Quick in the middle, and there is Bastianelli. What a great save and an up by Nebraska's libero, Kenzie Maloney. Bastianelli again that time puts it down. A nice defensive effort there by Kenzie Maloney. Take a look at the save here. She lays completely out and not only gets a touch, but a playable touch give her team a second shot at that. Pass there by Maloney, sweet. Tries to tip it over the top of the block. Aggressive swing, not down by Quaid. Quaid again into the block. And Schwarzenbach got a hand on that. Fecky rolled deep, corner not there. Taylor Cooper kept it alive. Maloney with another terrific up, and already, I'm going to say that was down. Oh, two touches called on Nebraska on the second touch, so point for the Illini. Take a look here. We're going to see that second touch on Lexi Sun. A little bit too much spin coming out of those hands. Three-three here early on. 
First time they squared off Nebraska ranked number three nationally. The Illini were seven. Those have reversed a bit. Quaid with the angle, but just wide on the swing by the junior out of Fort Wayne. 19th season on the bench for John Cook. And in his 19 year career, he has never seen three consecutive losses by his Husker squad. And he had that before the last win against Ohio State. We're asking with losses to Penn State, Minnesota, Wisconsin, three in a row. Hadn't happened in his 19 years. This team learning to be what he says, resilient. Nebraska early on here with a couple of aces. The last one there by Maloney. Good up by Sun. Fecky gets the swing. Tip try and down. A really smart play by Bastianelli. She, just the play before, or a couple plays before, hit smack down the line really hard. She knows that Maloney's back there on her heels, so she drops it right in front of her. First coaching job, head coaching job for Chris Thomas. His second season at Illinois. Again, his first head coaching job prior to Illinois. He was at Nebraska as an assistant, also coached under Hugh McCutcheon at Minnesota, so he's had some great mentors in his young coaching career. You see the kill by Fecky. Into the game now for Nebraska. Another freshman, Megan Miller out of Alexandria, Indiana. Miller started the first eight matches of the season for Nebraska. And then recently has seen an increased role in that back row serving. Great right up there by Nebraska again, overpass. And Stiffens puts it down. I'm gonna give credit to that point to Kenzie Maloney. The play before, Bastianelli beat her with that short tip. This time, Quaid tries to do the same thing. She takes an aggressive first step towards the ball and is able to get a pancake. Kenzie Maloney, one of the leaders on this Nebraska team, one of just two seniors. Net violation called on Stiverns. Too aggressive there. First joust of the game. Really pushing hard going after it as she's on her way down and her hands hit the top of the tape. Back to the pin, Fecky off the block. Good coverage by Maloney. On the back row, there's Chaplin Quaid. Wow. They've been trying to get her more and more involved. She's a six rotation player this year, and when they run her in system out of the back row, it is so fast. It's like she's in the front row. Last time these two teams played, Quaid with 22 kills against Nebraska. That was a then career high. She's since had 26, and she's really having a terrific junior year. One handed up by Maloney. Kept alive by Nebraska, but not over the net by Fecky. Take a look at the play of Kinsey Maloney here early. And she, lifter of the year this past year, one of the senior captains, has really set a tone here for Nebraska early on. Leading by example, for sure. Point for Nebraska, four touches on the Illini. So I asked Coach Thomas before the match, what blocking matchups was he looking to get? And he told me it's not about matchups, it's about execution. But I'm thinking one of the matchups he was trying to get was Beth Prince against Nicklin Hames here. But Hames, uh, small in stature, but very aggressive blocking. No touch, swing is long by Beth Prince. Looking for a touch here. Doesn't look like we see one there. A good decision by Poulter. Pushed it out to the pin and an aggressive swing from Fleming. 
who's the transfer from Pacific. And generally a middle, yeah. having her swing on the left side here and a really fast outside left side swing. Very quick set. Great slide. Stiverins with the kill and a terrific set as well from Haynes. Nice to get Stiverins involved early. This is a really tricky set. The blockers are thinking, is she right behind? Is she going all the way out to the pin? Right in between, hits the seam in the block. You see the hitting percentage for Stiverins above 400 last time out. Stiverins hits 789. And there is Sun. Perfect execution on the overpass. This is one of those plays that's momentum building. Here early on, Nebraska with two aces, a couple of serves that has led to overpasses. Similar recipe as in the first time they played. Dinsberger with the bump set to Sun. Great up by Morgan O'Brien. And then Nebraska Sun again with a little fist pump. Yeah, Sun showing some aggression there, showing some emotion. This Nebraska team is usually pretty even keeled. Take a look at her block here. Textbook, pike position, hands over the net, using it to fuel her team. That stops the Nebraska 5-1 run. Sun reaching behind her here when Densberger was there covering a communication error. Caroline Welsh in now for the Illini to serve, the junior out of Marietta. Nine aces on the season. Overpass. And a good serve by Caroline Welsh leads to the point for the Illini. We haven't seen a whole lot of in-system play out of serve receive. Like we expected, both of these teams coming to the service line attacking. Better pass there. Sun fires away. And another kill for Lexi Sun. Swing by Quaid, where when she gets a hold of it, there is no doubt. And I'm a former middle, so I'm going to give credit to the middles there. Ashlyn Fleming did a great job of going up strong on the approach, and Poulter shoots it right over her. So both blockers, Schwarzenbach and Sweet, are jumping with her, and Quaid has a wide open net. There's Schwarzenbach with the kill. Fourteen eleven, Nebraska up by three. Sun back to serve. Touchdown, okay. Actually struggled lately, hitting just 181 of the year, but here early tonight, showing a little life. Three kills on four swings. First deep corner out there. Good angle, but a nice up by O'Brien. Once again, Quaid with a kill. Quaid here with four kills already. Ten swings midway through set number one. Like we mentioned earlier, she carries a big load for this team. And here she's hitting in a really tiny seam. Nebraska did a nice job getting hip to hip on that block, but she has a super fast arm swing, and she sinks th swings through it before they're able to close. Wade had a terrific outing against the eighth-ranked Badgers in the win that the Illini had. 26 up, kills up. for Quaid in that one. On the slide, Bastianelli. Back to Sweet. Difficult angle there. Sweet got a hand on it. Here's Quaid again, a little roll shot. Nicklin Haynes there. Tried to go off the hands, did Sweet. It was just well wide on a miss hit. The floor defense from both of these teams tonight is fantastic. The defensive specialist Libero's lining up behind really solid blocks, getting great digs. And when your defense is giving you opportunities like that, you have to keep the ball in the court. Big 
Blocked by Quaid, evens it at 14. 3-0 run here for the Illini. Great blocking form by Quaid. The set's a little bit tight, so she attacks the ball. Take a look here. Hands pushing strong at the ball over the net. Service error is long, and that makes it Nebraska on top 15-14 and our first intermission, as you might expect in a battle of top 10s. 284 is really good for an outside hitter. She gets a lot of swings. That's in the upper echelon of what you want your outside hitter to get. But something John Cook has said about her is coming from Texas, a, a great school and a great conference, but not the Big Ten. She's used to when there's a double block, she can swing through it, she can swing over it. You can't do that here in the Big Ten. You maybe don't, don't have the night in, night out like you would in the Big Ten as well. Big 12 certainly, in K-State, Kansas, Missouri have been traditional powers, but you know, they're not the top 10 night in and night out. Right, like everyone always says, no off nights in the Big Ten, no <laughs> easy wins. We saw Bastianelli there on the slide, evens it at 15, Quaid serves. And that's the third service error. You know, we were taking a look at the break at the hitting percentages of both teams. The Illini right now hitting 172, Nebraska hitting 069. But what's kept Nebraska in it? Serving. Like we said from the get-go, serve and pass, so cliche. All coaches will tell you serve and pass wins, but in this game it's especially important. Nebraska with two service aces and another that led to that overpass. They've essentially on their serve had three free points, and the Illini with two service, is it three now three service errors. That's essentially six points for Nebraska off of the serve game. Make it seven. And you see Chris Thomas squeezing, squirming a little bit in the chair is hoping for not a repeat performance of what happened the last time these two squared off when Nebraska had eight aces to go with eight service errors for the Illini. Down the line. Oh, that's a nice swing by Beth Prince. And that's the matchup I was talking about right. that, that I think Chris Thomas was looking to get tonight. Beth Prince can really swing it down the line if she gets a set all the way out to the pin and she wants to hit over Nicklin Hames, a smaller blocker. Not just over her, but what a great line shot as she went right past Megan Miller as well. Once again, that time a hand on the block from Hames. Here's Lexi's son. Sun fired on high hands and connected. A really technical shot there. She's pulled in, she's off the net. It's difficult to hit hands when you're out of position like that, and she swings precision into those hands and gets a touch. Again, an aggressive swing for the Illini, and the kill for Megan Cooney on the left side. It can be difficult for teams to block the Illini's pin hitters because they run a really fast outside. You could see there that the block wasn't even quite set. They're drifting, they're jumping and drifting out rather than getting their feet there, jumping straight up and pushing over. Out to Sun, tip, and they kept alive. Throw Fecky. A good up by Welsh. Sun again. Inside. Into the block. Lexi Sun, Schwarzenbach both there. Sun does such a great job of doing the opposite of what I talked about in blocking before, getting her feet there, planting, and going straight up rather than drifting out. Sun off to a quick start. Four kills on eight swings. Two blocks. Nice block, Lex. Aim sticks out a wing and got it. Kept it alive. Oh, good touch by Quaid and Hames flies in there to keep it alive. Free ball here for the Illini. Out to the pen, Quaid. Great shot by Quaid in the deep corner. 
Boy, both teams just scrambling out of system. Take a look at this defensive effort by Nicklin Hames. Something that's so great about her. She's a freshman. She's leading this team that's one of the best in the nation. And she's also really great at defense. A lot of freshman setters don't have the mental capacity or the time to think about playing defense. They're only thinking about setting. She thinks about defense. Schwarzenbach with the kill there. To your point, yet, yeah, you know, Nicklin Hames really grew up in a volleyball family. Her dad is a club coach. Mom was a high school coach. Her younger sister has already committed to go to Pepperdine as an outside hitter in 2019. She's one of those players that Coach Cook referred to as, you know, she's a gym rat, knows the sport really well. Hands on the block there from Nebraska. Fecky into the block. Ash Ginelli got a good hand on that. Side Quaid, and the angle just wide from Jacqueline Quaid. So 21-19, Nebraska here, and a timeout called by Chris Thomas. Huskers four away, trying to open up this home with a one-zip win. They lead it by two. A good one here, Minnesota and Wisconsin. Big Ten Volleyball powered by American Ethanol. That's Wednesday right here on BTN and the Fox Sports app. Ready for Halloween here in Lincoln. There's a student section having their costume party tonight. Right now enjoying a two-point Nebraska lead late. And Beth, we talked about it. This is where many times this season Nebraska has begun to fall a bit and not maintain focus and finish plays and have a high percentage of errors is in these moments when it gets to 20. And what's so frustrating about that for this Nebraska team and their coaching staff is that you can't practice for this. There's no drills that you can do to prepare to be, you know, 21-19 against the number six team in the country. Right. You just have to do it. You have to be in it and experience it and fight through it together. Line I bit it from a terrific play there. I believe it was Poulter who on the overpass. Schwarzenbach had a clear floor and Poulter at the last minute jumped up and got the block. So Nebraska by one. There's Haynes well off. Fecky on the slide. That's Gianelli. A good up by Jazz Sweet. Free ball. And the kill by Quaid evens it at 21. So out of the timeout. Back to back points for the lineup. The defense again keeping Nebraska in these points, giving them second opportunities but then Quaid able to sneak through that hole in the block. So the Huskers take a timeout after the Illini answer back. We're all even at 21 here in set one. Good first set for Lexi Sun, who's well on her way to a double-double. Nice job swinging high on the outside, and then blocking has been fantastic. Her form is so textbook. Hiking, pushing over the net, and taking care of overpasses too. There you see the numbers, four kills, six digs already here in set one, hitting 444. Show a little bit of fire tonight too, maybe, you know, more demonstrative than we've seen her previously. I think so, getting comfortable in the Big Ten, getting comfortable with her Nebraska teammates. Starting to play more her game. Crowd back into it here in Lincoln, 8,000 plus at the Nevada Sports Center, tied at 21. Ames pushes out to Fecky. Big block, Bastianelli put it down. Nice in-system pass, but Illinois reads Hames. They are already there, standing in front of Fecky. She's pushed inside a little bit. Bastianelli hip to hip with Poulter, both pushing strong over the net. Three zip, Illini run. Fecky for the third time in a row. On the slide, Bastianelli and Fecky with the block. Fecky's put in a tough, a couple tough situations on, on that play. The setting location different every ball. She keeps it in play aggressively, and then here she turns it around. If I can't get it done with hitting, I'm going to get it done block. Tough serve there. Quaid. Bump set out to Fecky. Off the top of the hands. And to Quaid, who tried to push it right at Hames again, keeping Nebraska out of system. Quaid's done a nice job when she doesn't have a great swing. She's on right at 
Nicklin Haynes. Great floor defense here by both teams. That time the swing is long from Quaid and that will bring Nebraska to its feet. The defense, again, keeping them in this set, giving them opportunities here. They keep giving Illinois back the ball, forcing them to make the errors. And we saw two great plays there by Hames to keep it alive. And Sweet to bring it back to the court. What a tough serve over pass. Run the middle, Stivers doesn't get it down, but Fecky keeps alive. Free ball here, Illini, Poulter on the second touch, Stivers right there. Talk about showing some emotion. Stivers getting pumped up. Jordan Poulter is not easy to joust against. She has four years of experience going after those balls. She knows how to do it. She knows how to be the last person to put contact on. But Stivers pushes on the way down, and we'll be back after this. Well, here is a BTN standout presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Kept alive by Fecky. Stiverance pushing on her way down. That's the key to those overpasses. You touch the ball and you don't let go. You don't come down. As you are coming down from your jump, you keep pushing. And that's how she won that one. Stiverance has really become one of the leaders in just her sophomore year of this Nebraska team. You'll remember she was redshirted her freshman year, so her third year in the program. And here we are at set point for Nebraska. Time, it pays off for Quaid, third time. She had tried the tip and that time gets it. So second set point coming up for Nebraska. contact she had on that serve not only did it roll off the table like we talked before but it moved back and forth take another look here you see it floating in the air and dropping right in front of Kenzie Maloney first ace of the night for the Illini could not have come at a bigger moment with Nebraska on its second set point so that evens it at 24 we've got extra points here in the first one, what did you say at the top? You said these are the two best serving teams in the league, and it's going to be a factor already here in set number one. It's a big factor. Definitely. The difference, though, we're seeing, and you mentioned earlier, Larry, is the four service errors from Illinois, and this their first service ace. And sometimes looking at ace to error ratio and serving is not necessarily depictive of what's actually going on, because there can be tough serves that aren't aces uh, that are still getting the other team out of system. But those four errors, I think, have really been the difference to Illinois in this match. They're finding other ways to score because it certainly has not been the hitting percentages. You, you see the ties 13 and four lead changes here in set number one. The Illini hitting 120, Nebraska hitting 043. And uncharacteristically, Michaela Fecky hitting negative with only one kill. She's had 15 attempts, but she hasn't necessarily been put in positions where she can take big swings. She's being smart, she's putting it in play so that her team has additional opportunities. So two set points survived by the Illini, and now 24 all. Jacqueline Quaid, the junior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, Carroll High School, back to serve for the 19-3 Fighting Illini. Stivrens with the kill. Quaid goes after Kenzie Maloney. She nails the pass. Three points goes to Stiverance, who's been demanding the ball, like you said, very aggressive offensively lately, and puts her team in a position to win. Third set point upcoming for Nebraska, Megan Miller, the freshman in the serve. Miller. Out to Prince. Here's Fecky's opportunity. Tried that deep corner. Cooper kept it alive. Prince again, boy, great angle by Prince. And 
Saved by Miller. Back row, Quaid got it. Back to even at 25. About what you expect with number six and number nine in the country. John Cook talks about wanting to be, become a more resilient team. This will do it. On the slide, Stiverns touch. Great tip by Stiverns. This now is set point number four for the Huskers. Stiverns here, smart shot. The ball's a little bit behind her. She can't take a full swing, so she makes an aggressive tip. Poulter runs the quick middle, kept alive. Three ball over. The second touch, not there. Here's Sun off the top of the block, kept alive. Tip try, Sun hustles in to save it. Back row, Fecky. Sun tried to brush it off the block, not there. Quaid aggressively from the back row. Becky just saved it. Sun, block. Megan Miller kept it alive. Three ball over. Megan again, and finally put down by the Illini on the longest rally of the night, and we are even at 26. I've said multiple times that Nebraska's defense is keeping them in this match, and that's what it did here in this rally. But they also had so many opportunities to put that away. When you're in those positions, you have to take big swings. On the slide, Stiverns just got the tips of the finger and got the kill. The connection not quite there with her and Haynes on the slide tonight, but she's finding ways to still be aggressive. And now to serve for Nebraska, Haley Dinsberger. Set point number five. <laughs> Off the tape and out. This is nothing new for the Illini. They have Earlier this year, we're at a 35-33 tussle against Wisconsin. They know how to fight. Yeah. Going to serve now for the Illini, Caroline Welsh. On the slide, a great shot by the freshman Schwarzenbach. Good angle. Nice to get her involved. She when she's involved, Nebraska is more successful. They win more sets. Great timing here, very fast. She's out there chasing the ball and is able to take a nice swing. Oh, we know you're counting at home, but just to make it official, this is set point number six. One tough serve there. Ames had to pull that one out of the net. Son, Doug by O'Brien. Great up. Son again. Pulled back in. Here's Quaid. Into the block. Schwarzenbach and Sweet come up big on set point number six. When your offense is struggling and you can't get kills, you have to get it done another way. And here they do it with the block. Well, despite hitting 081 in set number one, Nebraska finds a way and gets it done on the sixth set point. Defense is really impressive. She's able to compartmentalize her defense and her setting, which is difficult for young setters to do. 11 set uh, assists and 10 digs. It's you often see a double-double in set one for any player. <laughs> there is Specky. They're trying to get her back on track as she had just one kill in set number one. Becky brought in a little bit here, so she's able to take a really sharp cross, but still hit that deep court where it's difficult to, to defend. Kinsey Maloney with the service error. 
That's the first service error on the night for John Cook's squad. And a nice job by Caroline Welsh following that ball all the way back to the end line, making sure it's out. Set Jazz Sweet, terrific angle by Sweet as the lefty went thumb down cross court. And her first kill of the night for Jazz. Wow. Hames does a nice job of getting her one on one. She has a lot of net. Number three, With a nice cross court shot. Here is Megan Miller, 5'6 freshman out of Alexandria, Indiana. Sir. Talked about her role has increased here in the last three or four matches. Just long on the swing. Looked like Cootie had that back line, but just long. So 3 1 Nebraska. Second meeting of the year between these two teams. Nebraska won the first in Champaign, 3 1. She has now doubled her kill total from the first set. She's got two here in the second, three overall. It was nice to see Nebraska get their middles involved in the first set. I like to say that when Nebraska gets their middles involved, then not every one of their pin hitters needs to be hitting 100% or be hitting on all night. But they need a couple of pin hitters to be on. So nice to see Michaela get rolling too. Good block there by the Illini, Miller kept it alive with one hand. Not much Fecky could do with that. We'll point to the Illini. Really high, tight ball here. And like you said, Larry, not much that she could do. Illinois putting up a strong block. Ames. Pushes out to Fecky, off the block and out. So Michaela Fecky getting a few more opportunities and kills here in the second set. As you said earlier, Fecky a two-time NCAA champ and was the most outstanding player in both of those NCAA championships. And there is that strength that you talked about with Jordan Poulter at the net. Rematch there for Poulter and, and Stivrens. She remembers in the first set, Stivrens getting the advantage on her. Here, Poulter goes up strong and is able to push Stivrens back off the net. Already this year, Poulter has been named Big Ten Setter of the Year four times in her senior year. Big solo block by Bastianelli. That's such a disciplined, disciplined block. Fecky's coming from the back row, so the timing of that block is different than if you're blocking against a front row attacker. You see her here. She's got to take a step over, wait, and then go. Sun rolls it over. Good up there by O'Brien. Back to Sun again. No touch, or even at five. Three-zip run for the Illini. Aggressive approach that time by Sun off the block. Uh, Jordan Poulter and the kill for Lexi Sun. She does a nice job there on a really high set out of system. So she's taking big approach, swinging very hard. The Illini block, Bastianelli not quite settled, so she gets a good bounce off their hands. Prince with the kill. And a nice set there by the libero, sophomore Morgan O'Brien. Very cool, collected. Gets Beth Prince in a space 
off the net so that she can swing aggressively and have a lot of angles. Walter chases that down, leaves it for Prince. A terrific job near the overpass, kept alive again. Touched by Quaid. Sun block back. Holter strong on that block on that right side. Second touch, not down. Bump set outside. Prince. And Fecky keeps it alive. Longest rally of the night. Overpass. Yeah, they're going to replay it. Quick whistle. Up official realized after he blew it that it did touch both hands. It wasn't another touch on one side. There will not be a point, and they will replay it. Watch this. A tense atmosphere here in the Devaney Center. We can see it on the bench, and we can feel it from the crowd. Swing. Wide, no touch point, Nebraska. That shot has been working for Beth Prince all evening. She misses just wide. Here, Hames is late. Prince sees the line open. When you have that opportunity, have to get it in. of back-to-back -back hitting errors by the Illini. Really fast back row attack, and you see missing just wide. Upset up to Prince. Same for Sun. Overpass, Sun again. And the Illini with the block, and it's Poulter again at the net. The awareness of Poulter to be right up on the overpass. Right, so before we've seen her strength at the net in an overpass when she's going on a head-to-head -head joust. There, a little bit more finesse, reaction, showing her volleyball smarts. So a block by Fleming in the middle, Ashlyn Fleming. Ashlyn did a really nice job there of reading Kelly Schwartz and box body. Callie's coming in as if she's going to hit it cross court, but she her body turns at the last second, and you see Fleming reach back to get that cutback shot. Touch and the kill for the Illini. Once again, it's Prince. Beth Prince is playing with those lines tonight, really going for the edge of the court. Slight touch there off of Jazz Sweet. And the ace right on the line. Three zip run for the Illini. John Cook off his chair and will take a timeout. It was 8 7 Nebraska, the three zip Illini run. And an ace for Jordan Poulter. Puts the Illini ahead. Six games, and sometimes a young squad can struggle with that. You see, this is a very new team for Nebraska with eight newcomers. They're two and four in their last six. Putting that three game skid. Kill there by Cooney. And the Illini up by three. Four zip run here for Illinois. On the serve of Jordan Poulter. Will slow that run. 11 9. Nebraska winning set number one. 29 27. Some will serve. Lexi, who at one point was hitting 444, now under 100. She's up to 23 swings on the night. Good coverage there. 
for the Huskers. Fecky. Is she going to get a touch? She does. Touch called. And the kill by Michaela Fecky. Difficult to see that there was a touch. Let's take a look at the replay. And you see Beth Prince's hands get pushed back. A touch there on the block. Holter out to the pin. And quietly, Megan Cooney has had some good swings from the left side. That's her fourth kill of the night. A nice swing by Cooney, but I'm going to point out Jordan Poulter. The little things that she does to get her hitters in good positions are so valuable. Her body language is so difficult to read. You don't know where the ball's going until it gets there. Good serve by Welsh. Tip try by Sweet. And the swing just long. Line eye players thought that might have caught the back line. And so does Chris Thomas. He's going to pull out the green card. So our first challenge here of the evening is Chris Thomas believes that that last push over the net caught that back line. Despite the back judge saying it was long. So at 12-11, Thomas with his first green card. So the challenge review system here in place in Lincoln. And let's take a look. So we're looking to see if any part of the ball hits the back white line. And here you can see some space between the ball in the back line. It did not take long for our R2 to make the decision. He says, well, check that. He said it hit the line and he reversed the call. I think both I'm you and surprised. I, both you and I were stunned by that. I was seeing red between the white line and the ball. And so I now we, we may have our R2. Yeah, they're just checking the rotation. So it was overturned. So point for and the final line on. Very quickly. Let's look at this again. Just out of it before. There is off the touch. Fecky with the kill. Nebraska not letting it phase them. Getting the ball right back. Good serve. Nice up there by Maloney. Back row swing wide from Sun for the Illini. Back to a three-point lead here in set number two. Into the game now to serve for the Illini is Kylie Bruder. Bruder, the sophomore setter out of Fort Lauderdale. Her first action of the night. Good serve. Maloney with a good pass there. System, solid swing for Fecky. She's been forced into situations where she's had to just put the ball in play tonight quite a few times. Here she gets a nice set, able to take classic Fecky, really strong high swing. The overpass, Stiverance could not get it down. Poulter will get another chance to connect with Quaid. As that time kept alive, here's Fecky. Poulter with the quick in the middle. Not there for Bastianelli. And mistimed on the ball out to Michaela Fecky. Fecky expecting a bit more quick tempoed ball than what was delivered. We talk about the benefits of having a senior setter and senior hitters that have worked together, and it's that connection. Take a look again here. Fecky thinking it's going to be a much quicker, lower ball, reaching for it, but just can't do much. On the slide, Stivrens. Good block by Quaid. G. 
Bastianelli right between the Nebraska block and then out off the dig and Bastianelli with another kill. She has four. And Bastianelli and Poulter have a great connection, but it wasn't necessarily there. The set not perfectly timed, the, road, the approach not perfectly timed, but Bastianelli uh, is able to adjust. You see her take a couple little quick steps so that she can get to the ball and still take a nice lane. And the ace. And it was Nebraska off to the quick start from the service line in set number one, but since then, the Illini now with their third service ace, and they lead it here by five in set number two. 17-12. And the service error erases the largest lead of the game for the Illini. The ball just floats away here. Not the contact that Cooper was looking for. Poulter out to Quaid, Quaid with a kill. And that's what makes Jordan Poulter so dangerous. Those really difficult sets she makes look so easy. She's so tight to the net and she pulls it back off of the net for Quaid not to get trapped. The slide, Stivrens punches at it. Bastianelli got a hand on the back row. Quaid and Stivrens got a hand on it. And Quaid runs a super fast back row attack. Take a look here, but this one may be a little bit too fast, pushing it just a little bit too much. So she couldn't get a swing on it. Takes off behind the 10 foot line. By the time she made contact, she might have been four or five feet from the net. And there is a service error on Nebraska. Back to a five point line I lead. Ryan now back to serve for the Illini. Sophomore out of Libertyville, Illinois. And Sun's swing is wide. And Lexi now with five kills on 25 attacks, but also five errors. She's hitting zero, and John Cook will take a timeout. So the Illini five away at 2014, looking to even this up here in Lincoln at a set apiece. Earlier this year, as two top 10 teams battled, it was the Illini and the Badgers of Wisconsin. How about the third set in this one? That they went 35-33, and the Illini ended up winning it. We talked about this Illini team having a core group of returners led by Bastianelli, Poulter, that type of experience, that type of senior leadership comes through in those extra point sets. So out of the timeout, the Fighting Illini just five away from evening this in Lincoln, one apiece. Jordan Poulter leading the way for the Illini. Served by O'Brien on the slide. Schwarzenbach is blocked. Prince with the block. Take a look at Beth Prince here. Excellent footwork. Big, solid steps. Plants her feet, goes straight up and pushes over. Another service error for the Illini. That is their seventh service error of the match. Back in for Nebraska, Jazz Sweet. And Hames back to serve for the Huskers. So options for Hames in the front row for Nebraska. Schwarzenbach, Sun, and Sweet. Bolter will have Prince and Fleming, but the ace for Nicklin Haynes. Now, Brian wants that one back. <laughs> when you think a ball is going out, you need to open up and follow it all the way to the end line so that you know it's going out. To back aces for Haynes right at Morgan O'Brien. And a timeout taken by Chris Thomas, preside in the toughest conference in the nation in volleyball. It makes sense that you're going to have some of the top RPIs. And look at the Illini. They have the third RPI in the country. And John Cook, after the three-loss streak, referencing that Nebraska had one of the hardest 
schedules in the conference. And, and it's very hard, especially when they're on the road, but Illinois is showing higher in the RPI. Yeah. Nebraska at 15 in the RPI, the Illini at three. So back-to-back -back aces for Nicklin Hames and out of the timeout. Quaid steps in front to take that last pass, the last serve. Tipped by Sun, and that's her first kill for Nebraska here late in the second set. Four zip Nebraska run. Sun does a nice job of finding the open space on the court, but it looks like there was a communication issue between Cooper and Prince there. Both of them in a position to get a hand on that ball. See Nebraska still attacking O'Brien there, but Quaid starting to step in and take the pass. And then Fleming gets the kill. Three away here for the Illini. Nice job by Fleming, a middle, swinging on the outside, using the block. Get up there by O'Brien. Dig. Kenzie Maloney. Great connection. And the kill by Fleming. Flem Fleming working really hard in transition. Blocking in her in her positions, but then on and off the net, making herself an option for every ball. Into the game here late in set number two with Nebraska down by five is another freshman, Capri Davis. And the service error, that's now eight for the Illini. Despite those eight service errors, they're just two away from set number two. Sun back to serve for Nebraska. Coulter. Boy, nice tempo on the set to Fleming. She's got two blockers reading that set in front of her, but she beats them off the ground. Take another look here. You see Davis stepping out for her assignment, leaving that hole in the middle. So set point for the Illini. One-on-one, -on -one, got it. The swing by Cooney, and Cooney closes out set number two for the Fighting Illini. So a set in which Nebraska hits zero, finds the Illini hitting 241, and they win it easily, 25-19. We're even at one here in Lincoln. The Illini hitting just a buck 60, but Nebraska not even hitting 100. The floor defense has been fantastic, and that's one of the reasons why the hitting percentages are so low. But even when Nebraska has opportunities to put it away, they're making errors, they're not taking aggressive shots. It's very uncharacteristic of this team. But at the same time, Illinois doing a lot of things to force them into those positions. One of them, defense, blocking, yeah. and then serving. Well, the Illini are being led by Jacqueline Quaid tonight. She has 10 kills. We talked about the low hitting percentage. Quaid only hitting 103, but she still leads everyone with 10 kills so far through two. She's taken some really great, great swings, and I love her back row attack. It's so fast. It's such an offensive weapon, and a first choice offensive weapon, not a back row attack that's a last ditch effort. And Poulter has been putting her in really great positions. Split blocks, one on one blocks, all the way out to the pin, so she has every shot available to her. Also a block to go with the numbers you see there for Jacqueline Quaid. A terrific evening for the Illini Junior. They are even at one here in Lincoln between the number nine Huskers and the number six Fighting Illini. Set three about to begin. Chris Thomas back here at the Devaney Sports Center after a coaching career that saw him on the same bench as that man, John Cook. He's in his 
19th year at Nebraska. Thomas in his second season with the Illini. And a while before he begins to really see the fruits of his efforts, not only on the floor, but in the recruiting. I talked to Coach Thomas before the match and asked him about his second year and when he would start to see his recruits coming in. And he says, when you start out, the women that we're looking at are in seventh and eighth grade. So it's about five or six years until you actually see the fruits of his recruiting labors. Long in the swing, nice sweep. Oh, they're gonna call a touch, so up official overruled actually and said it was in, so Sweet gets credit with the kill. And we're gonna have So at the same time, our R1 ruled a touch, and they are going to say it does stand. So either you're inconclusive on the touch or the line, either one, the point stays with the Huskers. Second challenge for Chris Thomas. There are the numbers tonight for the freshman setter for Nebraska. Maloney with the set out to Sun. Get up by Quaid. Massive swing by Cooney. Pulled back in. Three ball here for the Illini. Holter runs the quick. And the kill that time from Ashland Fleming. A smart shot by Ashland Fleming because she's a little tight to the net. And the ball is up on her. She can't take a full swing. If she takes a full swing, that, that ball's a home run out of bounds. So she finesses it with a snap, so it lands in the court. Tough serve, the overpass. Court for the Illini on four touches. So Nicklin Hames had thought that there was only one touch. She was waiting someone else to take it. This missed timing there between Haynes and Schwarzenbach. The connection just not there, but you see Nicklin Haynes trying to cheer her on her team, get them back into the swing of things, start to play Nebraska volleyball. In system there, Jazz Sweet. Good dig in the back row by Welsh. Touch by Quaid. Haynes comes flying out of the back row to keep it alive. Locked there by Schwarzenbach. Kept alive. Sun with the touch. Brian with the up. Go, go, go. Off the block. And the kill on the right side by Megan Cooney. Four zip. Illini run. The defense here, again, keeping Nebraska in this. 
but they keep giving the Illini opportunities, and they're taking aggressive swings on these opportunities. Poulter putting her hitters in good situations. There's a good swing for Jazz Sweet on that left pin. A nice in-system ball that they can now take a breath, gather themselves, and start playing their volleyball. of the match for Nebraska. Three of those for Hames. Take a look at the replay here. Just hits the tape, changes the total direction of the ball. Very difficult to react to in servicing. Back-to-back yeah. -back aces for Lexi Sun. She has 16 on the year. That's the second time we've seen Illinois serve receive do the duck move. <laughs> Get out of the way rather than follow that ball and make sure it's out. Listen to your teammates. They need to communicate to each other. Yeah. Back to Quaid again. Tried to tool the block. Boy, an aggressive swing from Fecky, but no touch and long from Michaela Fecky. So after a three-zip run, Illini back on top by one. Ninth service ace of the match for the Illini. Offered Reft with a quick conversation. Offered Reft in his first year with the Illini. Nebraska, Fecky and Stiverins doubled up on it. And they like that one. Good reactions from them there. Beth Prince can really swing. She has a heavy arm. But Fecky lines up right in front of her arm, goes after the ball. Blocking is an aggressive skill, not a passive taking up of space. There's Quaid. That's the 12th kill of the match for Jacqueline Quaid. She does so much for this team. Front row, back row, she's offensive all the time. She carries a lot of weight, and she's been pretty consistent. One big improvement for the Illini under Chris Thomas, and certainly when Kevin Hamden was there as, as well, is the pins. The pins have been so much more effective. And fast. Part of that is Coulter, there's no doubt, yeah. Coulter's ability to run that offense. I don't think there's a team in the Big Ten that's as big and physical as Illinois and runs as fast and offensive as they do. I think there's other teams in the Big Ten whose goal is to run a very fast offense, but they don't have the physicality that Illinois does. So when you add that together, it makes them very dangerous. How much of that is, you know, the senior in Poulter who's the physical and it's 6-1, just a very 6-2, very dominant setter. Slide, block back, kept alive. Sweet will get a swing. And what a shot by Poulter. It was the third touch, but Nebraska acted, acted a bit surprised. I think it was maybe the placement from Poulter that did it. Definitely. The placement was right into Stivrin's approach. So she's thinking approach. And when a ball comes at you right into your approach angle, you have to change mentalities and think first contact. So here's the freshman Taylor Cooper now serving for Illinois. Up by 286 here in the third. And even at a set apiece, the battle of Big Ten teams. And to the teams, Quaid with her 14th kill and a four-zip run now. It's been a set of runs here in the third. Quaid with this kill, and John Cook will take a timeout as the Illini now on top by three. It's 9-6.
here in set three. Nebraska football team picked up win number two, second consecutive win on the season. And we're here now tonight at the Bob Devaney Sports Center with Nebraska Volleyball. Probably should a quick shout out to this BTN crew here that's here covering this tonight. These professionals that work for BTN, not only were most of them here tonight getting ready, but they covered the football game earlier today. That was an 11 a.m. start. This crew has been covering athletics for BTN viewers all day long. Dedicated, and when I got here, smiles. Everyone yeah, happy to see right. me and very helpful. 9-7 here, Illini, and that's right in that back line. Another kill by Quaid, and the run continues for the Illini. I like when Jordan moves Quaid around. Here she brings her in on a 32-type ball where it sets in four or five feet, and it gives the block a different look. Ames out to the pin to Fecky. That's just straight from Fecky powering through that block. Or Bastian Elliott and Poulter, Fecky with the kill. Take another look here. Big block, hip to hip, powers through them. Eight kills for Fecky to lead Nebraska. Has not been an efficient night for Fecky. He's hitting just 061. But there's Lexi Sun with the touch. Nebraska back to within one here in the third. Sun does a nice job there of reaching up and getting first contact on the ball and putting it down before anyone else can even touch it. Great set from Poulter out to Prince. Sun with the roll. Prince dies to keep it alive. And Sun gets the kill and you see Poulter encouraging her team. An in-system play here, but what works is at the last second, Lexi Sun drops her elbow and rolls. She doesn't show it until very late. Nice pass there. On a very tough serve from Fecky. Poulter sets behind her. It's knocked down, back row, Fecky. Good up in the back row by Cooper. Bastianelli nearly got a hand on that. Sun dug it out, then gets the swing. She'll have another chance. On the slide, Bastianelli. Back row, Fecky, got it. And I'm gonna give Nicklin Haim some credit for that. A great swing by Fecky. But Haynes knew that Bastianelli struggled out on the slide. She's coming back, trying to get back into middle blocking position, run a super quick play with Fecky. Block isn't even established yet. Four zip Nebraska run, nine kills for Michaela Fecky. That pulled back in there by Quay to the ace. Boy, what a tough serve. Quay did not know. Right on her right hip against the line. What a tough place to handle the ball. And the ball not only dropped, it tailed off to her right. Another look here. You see the ball dropping and then tailing off. <laughs> that swing you loaded there. Beth Prince with a big swing. And a nice serve receive adjustment. Teams like to go after Quaid. Real easy adjustment. Get a nice pass, Poulter able to get that tight set out. And Beth Prince with her super heavy arm. Lexi Sun delivers on a scramble for both teams. What a point. We've seen some long rallies, great defense. Right, shout out to the Illini defense for a couple great digs in this play. But Sun, what a swing. Block is there. She swings thumb down inside of them with a nice snap to keep it in. Schwarzenbach got a hand on it. Out to Sun. Called out 
but are we going to have a point? Yep, a touch. Our down official, our R2, called a touch. Line judge said it was wide, but Nebraska gets the point. We're looking again here, and we're calling a touch, or the, our line officials or our down ref is calling a touch on Beth Prince. Hunter pulled off the net. Becky's dig is out. And a kill by Ashlyn Fleming. Again, so fun to see her on the left side. Traditionally yep. middle, has a really terminal hitting percentage, hitting over 400 in the middle. But when they need her, when she's in serve receive, to hit on that left side when she's left front, it's like she doesn't miss a step. It's very natural for her. What a great decision there by Nebraska setter Nicklin Hames. The slide pulled the blocker away, went back row, and Fecky delivered. Take a look here. Running this back row attack like it's a first tempo ball. It's like it's a front row middle attack. Good hustle. Upset from Maloney out to Chaz Sweet, who is trapped, and the block is there. That's Cooney and Fleming coming up big for the Illini. Not much Jazz Sweet could do. A very tight set, and the Illini block is there waiting, pushing over, and the ball goes straight down. Here in set number three, both teams have improved their hitting percentage. Nebraska's at 241, the Illini at 273. But that was the 10th service error on the Illini. The last time these two teams squared off in a four-setter, it was eight service errors for Illinois. That goes off the top of the block and a kill for Quaid. Her 15th kill on the night with 48 swings, 48 total attempts. Beth Prince next with only 26. So Bruder back in to serve. You know, the other interesting number here is the side out number. Usually if you're siding out, you want to be around 65, 70%. Neither team is siding out at a 60% rate. They're both below 60. Speaks to a bit of the defense, right? <laughs> Take a look here. Fecky with a big swing, and so many of her kills are in that back couple feet of the court, and that's really difficult to defend. The touch was a side out for the Illini off the swing of Quaid. And Poulter and Bastianelli doing such a good job of the fake out. Poulter, again, it's so difficult to read her setting body language. Stiffrens jumps with Poulter and Bastianelli giving Quaid a one-on-one. -on -one. Bastianelli right there on the block of Stiffrens and Bastianelli with another block. She's got four on the night. Not a great connection here with Stiveren. She's coming at that ball fast, ready to swing, and at the last second, the set's not there, and she has to adjust. Hit <laughs> put again by Quaid. And the Illini bench feeling yeah. that one. Even at 17. Three straight for the Illini, and they have now scored four of the last five. To Fecky. Ash Gianelli got the hand on it. One on one. Jazz Sweet able to get a hand to keep it alive for Nebraska. Here's Fecky again. That time the tool of the hands of Poulter and Fecky with the kill. The set before, Fecky hits right into the middle of the block. Her team's there to cover her, so she gets another opportunity. Here, tooling intentionally. It's not just a mistake. She's that good. She's intentionally hitting hands, swinging in and off of them. Oh, 
It's the third service error of the night for Nebraska against seven aces. Even at 18. Here in what has been a very deliberate match between the Illini and the Huskers. Overpass, pass Gianelli. And we're coming up to, I want to call it the reckoning point for this Nebraska team. John Cook says he wants them to learn how to win at 20, that five point game. And here we're going to see that put to the test. And another block. Pass Gianelli there with Poulter on the block. And John Cook will take a timeout. Line I have rattled off three in a row. Nice trail hand blocking there by Bastianelli. That's the hand that will so often get you, and you see her here at the last second push it over the net. Twenty eighteen here in set number three. We're even at a set of peace between these two top ten teams inside the Big Ten Conference. Illini at 20-18, the Illini hitting 212 and Nebraska hitting 089. Here's a look back at the last time that the Illini and Huskers scored off. This was in Champaign. Michaela Fecky led the team with 13 kills. It was a very balanced attack in that one. Is not only did Fecky have 13, but Lexi's son with nine, Schwarzenbach with nine. In fact, in that, Nebraska's middles, the last time they squared off, really were outstanding. Nine kills on 11 attempts, no errors for Schwarzenbach, who hit 818, and Stiverns had eight kills in that match as well. Nebraska's middles tonight have not been as effective. Right, I like to call that game for Schwarzenbach her offensive debut. She was quiet before that, but quiet again tonight with three kills and hitting negative. Well, coming up on BTN, Dave Revson, Stanley Jackson, and Chuck Long. They'll recap the entire day of Big Ten football. It's the final drive presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Coming up next right here on BTN. Line eye on top late here in set number three at 2018. Jack Quaid back to serve. Three-zip scoring run for the Illini. Passes off. Holter in system to Bastianelli. That goes off of Fecky's hands and out. Point for the Illini. And I'm not sure that Bastianelli could have got there, but Fecky reached over. And gave her something gave to it. push off against. Yep. So when the block is there, Bastianelli can push it in and swipe it off. That'll make it 21-19. Now Fecky to serve. Ends the four-zip run for Illinois. You see John Cook. Serves zone one right there where Quaid is. Cooper steps in front. Just on that back line. Beth Prince with the kill. Illinois is running a lot of really different routes in their serve receive. Here we have Quaid coming in, giving them something, the block, something different to look at than when she's been on the pin, having to adjust, and it leaves her a hole. Good swing on the right side as Stiffens puts it down. You saw in that rally a couple of nice digs by Taylor Cooper, who is now at 20 digs in the match. And that is a new career high for Taylor Cooper. And a nice look at the slide by Stiffens, pushing her all the way out to the antenna so she's able to hit on the outside of Illinois' block. Lexi's son with the tip. There's Cooper. Good up. 
Sun line got it off the hands of Poulter. A really nice transition set. Gave her every option. Sun likes the line shot. And here getting pretty excited. <laughs> there is Lexi Sun, 11 kills on the night against five attack errors. At one point, she had five kills and five errors. So she's rattled off six kills without an error. She has 38 swings, hitting 158. Becky leads Nebraska in kills with 12, hitting 114. And no surprise that the leader for the Fighting Illini is Jacqueline Quaid, who has 18 kills. And I'll point out again the attempts difference on this Illini team. So Quaid has 54 attempts. The next closest, Beth Prince, with only 28. So she's taking a big load for this team. She's a six rotation player, so she's offense when she's front row and when she's back row. She runs a super quick back row attack. Well, Nebraska's six rotation player, Michaela Fecky, has had a nice night. She has a double double with 12 kills, 11 digs. Let's look at her performance here tonight. Michaela Fecky, lightweight, also running a first tempo ball out of the back row when she couldn't get it done offensively. She put up a strong block again from the back row. And a new role for Michaela this year as the senior leader. Yeah. And something John Cook has said is that he's concerned that she might be focusing too much on leadership, that that three straight losses put leadership on her mind and not playing. He wants her to be able to be a leader while focusing on her game and doing what she does best. She's trying to lead eight new players on this Nebraska squad, many of whom are playing big roles for Nebraska, including a freshman setter in Nicklin Hames, a first year outside, a first year middle, a couple of first year DSs. The touch. Well, what a great touch by Beth Prince. She came in that approach so fast. She was sprinting. And what makes that work is the approach, the quick, fast, and at the last second, showing tips. So you, Nebraska's defense sees her coming in like that. They're on their heels. And then when she tips it right in front of them, they can't make that move. On the slide, Schwarzenbach right into the block. Good coverage provided by Maloney. Here's Sun, one and up in the back row by O'Brien. Maloney again kept it alive. Out of nowhere comes O'Brien. Swing long, no touch, point Nebraska. Beth Prince asking for a touch, but I don't see one. And also with that last dig by Morgan O'Brien, she has now tied a career high in digs. The Illini defense has been stellar all night. You see them lining up against their block, perfect position. Helps because the block is settled. They have a really strong block and they can read around it. But just lining up and taking balls in their body line is very impressive. Sweet had a one on one opportunity there, not down. Pushed right at Sun. He's right back to her. Sun, no touch. Yes, there was a touch. Even at 23. It looked like it was well high, but Sun must have been firing off high hands. And that Chris Thomas will have a quick conversation. They'll take a timeout. Nebraska with a two zip run is even this back at 23 apiece. And the timeout called by the second year coach for the Illini, Chris Thomas. And you can see that did catch that left fingertip with Beth Prince. So out of the last timeout, Nebraska able to put a couple together. Now the Illini will take the timeout. All even a set of piece here in this Battle of Big Tens. Well, it is a terrific matchup here in the Big Ten of two of the top teams, maybe the best sport in women's athletics in the Big Ten Conference. Have the Big Ten Women's Sports Report coming up Wednesday at 6.30. Report on some of the top performances around the conference in Big Ten's women's athletics. No doubt this will be a highlight at 23 each year in set number three.
So we talked about the defense of the Fighting Illini, how well they've had floor coverage. And that's evidence in the fact that both Taylor Cooper and Morgan O'Brien have now hit career highs and digs for the Illini. Cooper with over 20 now and Morgan O'Brien with 24. Right, and that can be so frustrating for an offense. When you do have a chance, Nebraska's been out of system a lot tonight, but when they are in system and you do have a chance to take a big rip at the ball and it gets dug up, that can be really frustrating and lead to er errors in other areas of their game. Even at 23, tough serve and the ace by Nicklin Haynes. Big ace for Haynes here late in the third set. And that will give Nebraska an opportunity at set point, a the, chance to go up 2-1. The crowd on their feet after that ace rolling off the table. Wurzenbach got a hand on it. Coulter had to chase it down. And the bump set back to Sun for the set. Just long. And we may have a challenge. John Cook already has reached for the green card. Our line official said long. There were 8,000 here at the Devaney Sports Center that thought it was in. It got loud and then very quiet. And John yes. Cook has challenged. Here's, Here's one more look. Nice high contact. Nebraska is challenging the So they're challenging the net violation. That did look like just past the back line. Illini looking at the replay. Everyone here looking at the replay on the scoreboard here. Here's the net. Well, tough to tell there if the Illini brushed the net. Taking it back a little further, watching the Illini block. Hmm. Not seeing anything on the tape, but it does look like the, there's a little movement in the net, but maybe not up at the tape by hands. So our R2, Rod Rodriguez, will be checking not only the touch at the net, was there a net violation? Was there a touch? And then was it in or out on that back line? I'm not sure either one of us see anything that's going to overturn the call that this was just long. Right, nothing conclusive. And again, we are at set point. So if this is reversed, Nebraska goes on top two sets to one. Rodriguez has made his decision, and it will stand. So the Illini fight off, set point here in the third. Some boos from the crowd here, <laughs> but I think that's the right call. Nothing that would show indisputable evidence that that call should have been overturned. Maybe some questionable right. footage there, but. So Welsh now back to serve, all even at 24. We've had extra points in two of our first three sets here tonight. Sun off the block. Nebraska will have a second shot at set number three. I love the decision to go back to Sun. She wanted that kill from the set, from the play before so bad. So she demands this one and she gets it done. Now Sun will serve. Good out by Maloney. Bump set, Quaid again. Maloney again with the up. There's Fecky. Good coverage there by Poulter. Neither team has been in system in this rally. They won't be here either. Fecky will get a swing though. And long, no touch. Really an uncharacteristic error for Fecky. She was not forced into that error. Right. 
So Kylie Bruder comes back off the bench to serve for the Illini, even now at 25. Our first set of the night went 29-27. Back to Jazz, sweet, block closed late, but got a hand on it. No touch, it's wide. Nope, they will say there was a touch. Check that, net violation, not a touch. Nebraska called for being in the net. And now the Fighting Illini with an opportunity here to take set three. They've survived two set points for Nebraska. Out to Fecky. Bump set out to Quaid. Delivers. Quaid finishes it for the Illini. 27-25 in the third, and the Fighting Illini on the road have taken a two sets to one lead over the ninth ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers. Quaid finishes it in the third. Quaid hitting 212, which is lower than they'd like to hit, but a solid hitting percentage led by Quaid with 20 kills. And then we look at Nebraska hitting .092. Every one of their hitters struggling offensively. And for Michaela Fecky, 12 kills. She's hitting 085. 11 digs. She's in a double double territory. But it was Jacqueline Quaid that closed it out in set number three for the Illini. She has 20 kills already on the evening. 61 swings. Her hitting percentage has jumped up to around 230. Ready to go here in set number four. The Illini will start it off. Outside, Jazz Sweet will take the first swing. She gets the touch and the kill. Not a great connection there. She's early, doesn't have great ball hand contact, but she's able to find some hands. Pretty resourceful swing there. There's Quaid again. Sun with a good up, out to Fecky. What a great deep corner shot by Michaela Fecky. How much would Michaela Fecky be helped if Jazz Sweet could suddenly start terminating and getting a few more swings? Right, if we could get the middles and Jazz on the right side going, the Illini block is going to start shading that way. Open things up for Michaela so that she can have holes in the block, open lines, and start hitting different shots. Tough serve, Coulter pulls it out. And trapped there was Cooney right into the block of Schwarzenbach. Schwarzenbach second in the conference in blocks per set. She's been a bit quiet in that area tonight. And just a freshman, blocking is often the most difficult skill for freshmen to adjust to, but she stepped in in a big way. I say quiet, she's had four blocks on the night. Good touch, Kelly! Sun with a one hand up. Becky rolls it back, takes Poulter out of the play. There's Quaid. She was trapped as well. And we are all conference setter out of the play, and you're going to have plays like that where there's not much you can do with it, right? Right. A lot of Quaid's success tonight has, beca has been because Poulter puts her in great situation. Here, like you said, Larry, completely trapped. Nothing she can do. Fourth service error on Nebraska this evening. So Nebraska opens up the fourth set with a 4-0 run. And Ashlyn Fleming, the junior out of San Jose, California, transferred from Pacific. A tough serve there. As sweet from well after that goes right at Fleming. Rolled over in system. Haynes to sweet. Quaid, a touch on it, and point for the Illini. When you can hear the ooze from the crowd of wanting two touches. Right, thinking the, the set wasn't clean. Certainly a touch there. That's 12 service errors for the Illini. And only three 
three service aces, not the balance you're looking for in ace to error. Errors are okay when you're serving aggressive. When your goal, like Chris Thomas said, is to get at the service line and attack, you're going to make some errors, but you want to walk that line a little bit closer. Quaid picks up kill number 22. Back in now for the Illini is Taylor Cooper as we look at Quaid. Again, bringing her in on that 32 ball on the inside, giving the block something different. When you move your pin hitters around, makes it difficult for the block to establish itself. Lexi Sun slides out of the way at the last moment. Back-to-back -back service errors on the Illini. Again here, Lexi at the very last minute, likely hearing from her teammates that the ball's out and stepping aside. Good up by Miller on a tough swing from Bastianelli. Other side this time. Angle was tried by Quaid, but was wide. Her eighth error on the night, but she has 67 no. total attempts. Take a look here. Her body is facing that angle. She hits it right out. Off the block, block kept it up for Nebraska. Fecky tried line, overpass, good reaction by Poulter. Trapped in the net, the overpass. Look at O'Brien keeping that alive, another tip. No touch on Nebraska. Four touches on the Illini. Timeout taken by Chris Thomas as Nebraska is in the middle of a three-zip run, and that's three hitting errors on Quaid here in this fourth set. She only had six through the first three. Well, coming up on BTN, Dave Rebson, Stanley Jackson, and my personal favorite all-time Iowa quarterback Chuck Long will recap the entire day of Big Ten football. Final drive presented by Auto Owners Insurance. That's coming up next right here on BTN. A good one here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Set number four between two top ten teams, the sixth-ranked Illini and ninth-ranked Huskers. That ends a three-zip Nebraska run. A nice connection on the slide. Poulter's able to hold Stiffrens in the middle. Gets Bastianelli a one-on-one, -on -one and she tools the block. Impressive swing from Fecky. Kind of got a ball she could drive at. Didn't yeah. trap her. So smart, and Illinois' block is moving in on her. You see they're giving her the line. They're going to take away the cross-court shot. And she sees that and says, I'll take it. Gianelli on the slide, and long off of the dig of Fecky. She's so fun to watch. Not a great connection. We've been talking a lot about the great connection that Jordan Poulter has with her hitters. That wasn't it. That was an adjustment. That was Bastianelli speeding up her footwork, moving her arm swing around, and getting it done. Ace by O'Brien. Morgan O'Brien picks up the fourth ace of the night for the Illini. Back to within three. A good touch by Sun. Saw the open floor in the near corner and took it. All the momentum in that play going cross court, and she takes it, puts it the other way, and defense can't respond. Haley Dinsberger in to serve for the Huskers. And just wide. And Beth Prince just barely out of the way. <laughs> Stevens back in now for Dinsberger. 
Take a look at Beth Prince. The ball coming right at her. Usually, when the ball's going out, you want to stay in the court. You don't want it to hit you on your way out, but not much she could do there. Prince tried line. No touch wide for Nebraska. Three players on the floor tonight who are finalists for the Senior Class Award. Only 10 seniors across volleyball in the entire country are nominated as finalists, and three of those tonight on the floor here. Two for the Illini. There's one right there. Jordan Poulter on the second touch. Dumps it in the campfire. So she's a finalist for a senior class award, as well as Michaela Fecky for Nebraska. It's so easy to forget that these women are student athletes. All around great individuals that are making impacts on the court in the classroom. And, and the third is Allie Bastianelli. So two for the Illini and one for Nebraska are among the ten finalists. And of course, that is senior class award really awards athletes for excellence not only in the classroom but also in the community, their character, their competitiveness. And good tip there is down. Illini back to within two. Ace. Illini Welsh with the ace. It's one of those situations where you need to rely on your teammates to let you know if that ball's in and out. Sometimes when you're in these tight sets, that's when, that's when communication can struggle. But when you're in these tight matches, that's when communication needs to pick up. Off the block and out, and a 4 nothing Illinois run. A swing and kill by Cooney. Evens it at 11, and John Cook will take a timeout at 11 here in set number four. Fighting Illini on top here in Lincoln. They lead it two sets to one over the ninth ranked Huskers. She's had a nice evening here in Lincoln. And it hasn't always been pretty for Allie tonight. She's really playing scrappy. And what that means offensively is that she's adjusting to balls, adjusting her approach so that she can take aggressive swings on every ball. And here you see that trail hand pushing over for a nice block. A really huge impact on this team as a senior. And the Illini career block leader. Yeah. 16th national lead hitting percentage, 20th in blocks per game. She has averaged over her career 341 for a hitting percentage. And the impressive part of that is that she's been better every year. Didn't have a sophomore slump, didn't drop in her junior year, has steadily improved throughout her entire career. This year she's hitting 391. And as I always did about my playing career, so much of that success to the middle goes to her set. And her and Jordan Poulter have been able to grow and build on this connection that just has been getting better and more efficient and more terminal every year offensively. It's funny we never hear you mention your setter, though. I just always hear about what great things <laughs> you did as a player. It's unusual. I mean, it's... Middles always love giving credit to their setters, I'll tell you that. And even when prompted, you still don't mention your setter. I'm disappointed. The great Lexi Zimmerman, All-American. <laughs> Everything I did, I owe to her. Who could forget Lexi? 13-11 right? here. It's a six-zip Illini run. Even out of the timeout, the Illini continue that run. Great run here on the serve from Carolina Welsh. Good pass in system. Can it terminate? No. What a big swing in the middle. And again, the Illini continue that run, Fleming with that last kill. Fleming hitting 389 on the night, coming into this match, hitting 410. I talked to coach Rashinda Reed about her transfer, and she says it feels like Ashlyn has been on this team for years. She hasn't missed a step. She fits right in with this Illini team. Jazz Sweet has been quiet most of the night, but that is her fifth kill on three errors, 29 swings. Take a look at Jazz Swing, Jazz Sweet's swing here, taking advantage of a hole in the block. Lexi 
Jeremy Zimmerman texted earlier tonight and just said, see if you can get Beth Mitchell on your points. <laughs> Kidding, she really is. Another communication error on the part of the Huskers and the Illini up by three here. A 6-1 scoring run now for, I think it's 7-1 for the Illini. A communication error there with Schwarzenbach, and that's a, a, a young middle mistake. If you're in the middle, you need to get off the net. Move so your setter can get in there, get your feet there, and get the second contact. Make yourself a hitting option. So the bad first contact led to a bump set out to the pin, and Jazz is wide, and it's now 8-1 run for and this, Illinois. And this was not a forced error, again, for Jazz. We've talked about the difference between a forced error and just an, an error of omission. And that swing, it wasn't aggressive. It was just... Schwarzenbach with the kill in the middle. I think... Those who've been and those fans who've been watching Nebraska here maybe have noticed that it's been difficult for Nebraska to score late in sets, to close out sets that they've been ahead in. Great example of Penn State and at Wisconsin. And even when they get in the middle of these bad runs and bad stretches, it's also been difficult to slow those runs of their opponent. Michaela Fecky with an emphatic fist pump. It's a way to end a run of your opponent. And when they play in these streaks, though, they have very high highs and some pretty low lows. The second set against Penn State keeping them to 11 points. When they are on, they're on. They need to learn to extend that in the third set. Bastianelli, good angle there and the kill. We said that not all of her kills have been pretty tonight. There's a nice pretty one. Yep. Cut back shot. Stiverin's taking the hard angle and she goes with the cut back. Stiverin's hung up there long enough to get a fingertip on it and the kill. Everyone's doing a great job of, like you said, Larry, hanging up in the air. Not the perfectly timed connection, but still able to take a nice aggressive swing. Right up. Checking line, that's a good dig for the freshman, Cooper. Into the antenna, was it off of the block? They're going to say it was off of the swing into the block. Our up official has awarded the point to the Illini. There's going to be a conversation here. See John say there it was off the block. You can read his lips. And John says, all right, then I'll challenge it. So John said, before I challenge it, talk to the line official. Let's see, did it go off the block and then the antenna or into the antenna? Looks to me it goes off, off the, the block. block and the ball changes, di changes directions and goes directly parallel with the tape into the antenna. So our officials will get together and talk it over before John Cook goes to the green card. And they did overturn. So there was no challenge. And uh, now <laughs> Chris Thomas will challenge it. So the two officials got together, talked it over, and decided to reverse the call, give the point to Nebraska, and now Chris Thomas will challenge. And you can see clearly there it did go off of the hands of Jacqueline Quaid into the antenna. Right, tough in that angle, but the previous angle we saw before, Quaid, this angle here, Quaid's floating on her block. She's not quite established. So she goes to reach in, but the ball has already hit the outside of her lead hand and then bounces straight into the antenna. So Rod Rodriguez says point to Brasco. Out of 
challenges. Nebraska has two remaining unless we go to a fifth and deciding set, at which point both coaches will get one more challenge. We're talking with coaches around the league, in fact, I'm sure you have two. It's, most coaches agree that if you challenge and your challenge is successful, it would be nice to get additional chat to not lose that challenge as opposed to you get three and then you're out whether you're successful or not. Right. The adjustment that was made this year to the CRS system is that they get the additional challenge in a fifth and you see some great defensive play here. Bastianelli finishes it off for the Illini right down the line. She's so good off of one foot. Take another look here. Chasing the ball out. Poulter puts her in such a great position. Fecky taking cross. Because the set is all the way out to the antenna, she has a clear shot of the line. 18-16 here in the fourth. <laughs> Fecky off the hands with the kill. here learning to work with that big double block tonight. Bastianelli closing it, hitting high off the hands. Tough serve, great pass. Bastianelli trapped a bit right into the block of Sun, and Lexi Sun evens it at 18. What a match we have here. Bastianelli gets one down the line, very next play. Sun all over that, aggressively going after the ball. Aggressive swing by Sun, but wide. Eighth hitting error on the night on Lexi Sun. Right back to Stiverns again, tip that time. Ryan saves it. Wade can't terminate out of the back row. Good hustle by Cooper. Well, we have seen some rallies tonight. The defense is phenomenal. Again, a terrific kick by Maloney. Powered through, and Michaela Fecky finishes it. That's the way a senior leader captain finishes a rally like that. We saw lots of roll shots, defense all over the place picking it up. She comes in here on a very fast back row attack. I love when they bring her over on the back row attack. Back row attack most traditionally runs straight up the middle. We've seen Quaid do it a lot. They move Fecky over a little bit to the right side. Gives the defense a totally different look. Good job by the freshman Schwarzenbach to get a hand on the try on the second touch by Poulter. Kill for Fleming. She has been so versatile tonight. We've seen her on the left, strong kills in the front. She'll go behind every now and then, and here's a nice straight on behind the setter. They're really mixing it up with their attacks. I mean, not just the middles for Illinois, but their outsides too. They move them around quite a bit. Good coverage. Back row, Fecky kind of rolls it over there. Bump set for Mooney, who could not get it down, and Sun is wide. Sun wants a touch on that one, but no touch call. Back to back points for the Illini, and a timeout taken by the Huskers. <laughs> Illini with a two-point lead here late in Lincoln in set number four, trying to put the finishing touches on a on what would be a 3-1 victory over the ninth-ranked Huskers. Nebraska's been 
a bit of a tumble here lately. Having lost to Minnesota at home, on the road at Penn State, on the road at Wisconsin, on the road at Minnesota. And a five game stretch where they lost four in a row. Four out of five. Three away are the Illini after the kill from Beth Prince. Nebraska came into Huff Hall earlier this year taking a match away from Illinois. They want to take one from Nebraska in the Devana Center. Sun goes line and Poulter got a hand on it. The Illini block does a nice job of feeding the line shot to Poulter. Defense, she's just too much to, too, Sun's swing is too much for her to handle there. Nicklin Hames to serve, already with three aces tonight for Hames. That's a season high, wide, no touch from Fleming, who powered through that one. She really went after that one. Take another look here. She's got a big double block, but she's coming through with such a fast arm swing, it beats it past him, but it's wide. Wade steps in front, takes the pass, big block from Schwarzenbach off the swing of Cooney and we're even at 22 and another timeout. Nebraska now on a three zip run. You see the freshman Schwarzenbach getting over a bit late but got the hand there. What makes her such a great young blocker? She's got a lot of good things going for her. Her footwork is fantastic. She reads where the setter's gonna go, opens up, gets pin to pin, but what you saw there is her hands. She has great hands. It's so easy when you're a little bit late to a block, when you're reading a setter like Jordan Poulter, who you're gonna be late almost every time, that when you're floating over, your trail hand is gonna trail back and get pushed off the net. She has her trail hand pushing strong over even as she's floating. And that is so difficult to teach, but she's come in as a freshman and, make it, and has made it look easy. Well, this 3-0 run has re-energized this Lincoln, Nebraska crowd here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. Hoping to push this to a deciding fifth, the Illini would like nothing more than to close it out here. And look at the attendance tonight. This arena sits 79 plus, 7,900. So those extra 300 are all standing room only at the top of the arena. You can't see it, it's in black around the top. It's kind of dark up there, but Nebraska sells square. It is three or 400 plus standing room only seats. And usually on a football Saturday when there's an early game, you see a lot of standing room only here at the Devaney Sports Center. People wandering over and wanting to watch one of the top programs in the country in collegiate volleyball. And I, I talked to Coach Thomas about playing in the Devaney Center. And of course, he's used to coaching in the Devaney Center. And he said it doesn't phase his players. Again, he has this really solid pro group of returners, and they love it. Yeah. Out of that timeout for the Illini, John Cook's reaction to the service error. And that puts the Illini two away. Well, Nicklin has been so good at the service line tonight. And now it's the turn of Caroline Welsh. Good pass by Fecky in system. Back to Sun. Coverage provided by Maloney. Sun again, and the block is there. And the Illini now a point away from the match. Big two-person block there. Illini looking to finish this out. And they'd love to finish it with a block. Caroline Welsh to serve for it. And the block on the right side. And the Illini have come into Lincoln, Nebraska and knocked off the ninth ranked Huskers. Celebration from the coaching staff as Chris Thomas picks up his first win over his former mentor 
and the head coach, John Cook. This Illini team has had a tough stretch in the Big Ten. We showed earlier number three RPI for their schedule, but they are getting better and better as the season goes on, and that's a sign of a great team. You want to be playing your best volleyball at the end of the year, and this Illini squad is looking to do that. Illini victorious here in Lincoln tonight, 25-22 in set number four. And they pick up the win here in Lincoln over the ninth ranked Huskers. So they are improving their resume for the postseason by the moment. We are joined now by the head coach of the Fighting Illini, Chris Thomas. Coach, first congratulations. What was effective for you after that difficult second set? Uh, you know, I, I told him I liked everything that I saw and that we had to just keep attacking. Uh, you know, Nebraska's a great team, have some experience being here, knowing that they're, you know, very good defensively. So we couldn't just give them shots away. We had to go for the swing when we had it. We did and uh, played excellent four defense as well. So I'm really proud of the great team effort. We always talk about that, uh, kept attacking from the service line. So just a lot of things we did well tonight and uh, able to uh, come out with a win. Coach, talk about what it means to have a great senior leader in your setter, Jordan Poulter. Oh, it's great. Uh, you know, she is the true uh, embodiment of a floor captain and, and uh, just uh, of a great player. She brings it every single day that we're in the gym, and uh, I don't have to ask her to work harder. She comes out and, uh, you know, brings this group to another, another level, and you saw that here tonight. Chris, talk about what it does for your team to bring them into an environment like this, an environment you're very familiar with having been here and coached here. What What is this? What kind of momentum and boost does this give your team? Oh, I told a lot of people we, we had a little rut there, and I was like, we, we're playing good. I'd see it in practice every day. It was a matter of just translating into a match. And uh, had a nice win at Wisconsin a couple weeks ago, um, able to sweep the Michigans at home, and then to be able to do it in front of this environment, in front of this crowd, and just keep staying aggressive, like I mentioned, and, and being able to come out uh, as, a, as a great team victory. It's just it's always great, but we still have more work to do. Uh, there's still time to get better. You know, spoken like a true coach. Uh, that's there's always room for improvement. But I, I liked a lot of what I saw tonight. Chris, congratulations on the big road win. Thank you very much. Appreciate uh, it. It's Chris Thomas, the head coach of the Fighting Illini. Let's look at. You heard him talk about Ali Bastianelli and, and Jordan Poulter and their senior leadership. Let's take a look at what Ali did tonight. Ali did a lot tonight, blocking again the career block leader for the Illini, going pin to pin, matching up. Nicely. And then Ashlyn Fleming there on a block two. A nice night for the middles. Well, big smile there from the senior, <laughs> I'm sorry, from Ali Bastianelli, the senior out of Marysville. We'll talk about what this, this win means coming in here to Lincoln. Yeah, it, it's amazing. I mean, since I got here as a freshman, we haven't been able to beat uh, Nebraska on their home court, and the environment's insane. And it just means a lot as a team. I think it was a great team win. and. Um, I think we executed at a really high level, and um, it was a really fun game. Ali, I asked Coach what it meant to have a senior leader in Jordan Poulter. Can you talk about your connection with Jordan and going together these four years and, and finishing out your senior year? Yeah, um, it's grown a lot stronger since uh, we were freshmen, and I think we're um, finding each other in weird plays that maybe we wouldn't connect with before. And um, there's definitely a senior connection. I mean, playing with her every day in practice for the past four years has really paid off. And um, like you said, she's a great leader on the court. She directs um, the traffic of our offense a lot. And um, I mean, she's a huge part of our offense. You couldn't do it without her. Allie, thanks very much for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Allie Bastianelli, a terrific night for the Fighting Illini. That's it from Nebraska. The sixth-ranked Fighting Illini come into Lincoln and knock off the ninth-ranked Huskers.